This segment of the webcast is presented by the marketing department, offering a full suite of services for the mobile app lifecycle, delivering outstanding ROI to app marketers and publishers. Hello, everybody around the world in the mobile app community. Welcome to another edition of the App Resource Connect. I am E. Emmett Brady, and we are recording live from CES, the center of it all, the Consumer Electronics Show here in Las Vegas, Nevada. And this whole week, we are taking a deep dive into the world of mobile app marketing, and we might as well start right with the deepest dive. I'm here with Oscar Sarander. He is the Senior Partnership Director with Quixi, and uh, they just did a fantastic talk on stage, uh, a, a panel all about monetization and really that's the beginning and the end of the whole thing. So Oscar, I want to welcome you to the App Resource Connect. Thank you so much. Nice to have you on Pleasure board. So um, quixie has got a lot going on. I think from the talk, the two things that I heard were uh, innovative search, innovative re-engagement. Why don't you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, so what Quixie has actually been around since 2009 and what we set out to do is try to solve the app discoverability problem. Like, it's so hard to find apps and with apps growing faster than the early days of the web, um, it's become a huge problem for app developers, um, app marketers, and publishers alike sure. in the mobile space. It's, so, it's probably the biggest thing right, with the influx say. of apps. It's probably the most challenging part. Right. Yeah. Um, and the way everything is growing exponentially, it's it's a problem that doesn't, doesn't really go away. Um, so what we set out to do is create a search engine that helps people not only find the apps that they they want to help them, you know, um, solve their, their problem, whether that's, you know, finding games for my two-year-old daughter or finding the best restaurant app, but actually deep linking users into deeper states within apps. So I like that you said uh, deep dive. It's yeah, really what sure. we're doing on search, kind of reinventing what, what the mobile search experience should be like. Um, it's not about blue links anymore and static web. It's more about uh, linking into where people spend more most time, which is inside apps and the content and actual functions within apps, right? So. You know, searching for um, a, a musical artist that I, that I talked about on stage, um, you know, being able to not only see uh, the apps that can help you find, list, you know, song, being able to listen to that artist, but also find the actual deep links into apps you already have on your phone or other music apps that have that content. Yeah, see, um, deep linking, of course, most developers are probably familiar with this term, but uh, deep linking is like the <coughs> latest innovation. Mm -hmm. It's past web, it's even past mobile. It's really an intimate user experience. Isn't, isn't that the case? Yeah, that is the case. Um, and it's, it's really just starting. It's starting to become a buzzword this year uh, or last year, and it's really taken off this year, uh, more and more sophisticated app marketers are understanding the, the importance of having deep links. Um, because instead of, you know, I, I always explain it kind of walking into a house, right? You know, taking someone in, inside your app, you have to take them through the front door. But if you know that you want to go back to the, the barbecue area of your house, why not take them there instantly? So what, what happened with Google and search engines is back in the 90s with the, the web. Way back it's in the 90s. A, it's exactly, exactly. Um, it's what we're doing with in the app ecosystem. So really being able to, to take users where they want to go within with apps. And, and for, for advertisers and app marketers, it's very important. Um, I talk, talked about that on stage as well. We're, we're still talk about these installs and, and how you get more users, but it's not really about that anymore, right? Uh, we believe that we look beyond the install and we think that um, uh, install is, is in, in many ways a vanity metric. You can have 150 million sure. installs around, right? But sure. what actually makes sense to your business is how active those users are. Sure. So even if you're a super brand like Spotify who you know, have all these appeal around their brand or if your trip advisor has been around forever, you still look at, a, I don't know, 20 to 40% monthly active users, which, which sure. could potentially be better if that app and the content that you have can get in front of users in a, in a simpler fashion, yeah, either through that, explicit search or when you are um, maybe browsing and, and consuming related content. So that's what we do too. There's a, there's a lot to think about because it's not just about finding them, it's re-engaging them. It sounds right. like one of uh, Quixie's specialists. Yeah. So if we look down to 2015, what's on the horizon for Quixie as far as connecting with the publishers and the developers? I think what we're doing now is, because uh, we're using our technology 
to help publishers. We see a huge need in the marketplace for monetization um, and for uh, traditional publishers as well. So looking at all news and magazine apps are now, you know, in, in some ways scrambling to get into the mobile space sure, and understand sure. how they can monetize mobile users because they're all there, right? Everyone is flooding over to mobile. And what do we do there? Um, and, you know, this year, 2015, the display banner ad turns legal drinking age, I believe. It's 21, <laughs> 21 years. Okay, so and this <laughs> interview marks the death of the banner ad, folks. It happened right here at CES. Right. And, and uh, um, Oscar is going to walk me through this one. Uh, 21 years old. 21 years ad. old. Okay. And, <laughs> That's great. I mean, it's not really working, right? Um, there needs to be something else, and, and there's a lot of, of ad formats and and, uh, and uh, user experiences that have been you know rising the past couple of years. Sure. Videos on the rise, of course, uh, since more brands want to get into mobile, where their users, where their audience Everybody is. Everybody loves right? a quick, quick video. For sure. You're right, uh, and um, and um, and native advertising and so forth. There is going to be a, a lot of a lot of focus on on trying to find that. What we're doing is creating something that we believe is, from a user standpoint, the best solution which is related content. It's really um, taking a, one app you spend time in and, and making sure that we can find a link to another app that makes sense to you. So reading that article about um, latest uh, restaurants in, in New York and Manhattan and having a link to book uh, a table at that restaurant in your favorite app, I think is a great user journey and it sure. it serves the publisher really well. Um, it sounds like you're moving really to bring this ecosystem idea to life, where everything's yeah. interactive, everything's right. alive. Yeah. And, and with that in mind, you know, a developer and a publisher, they have a lot to think about because it's a way more complicated game. The right. stakes are higher, everything's moving faster. If you had a new dev, a new publisher sitting down, yeah. what's the first thing, a bit of advice you'd give them? I would definitely look into deep linking and what that means to you. What is your content? How do you build out your your sitemap? Um, if you have a website already, how do you translate that into into your mobile device and, and into your app? Um, I would look into all the different standards that are out there. Uh, Quixie, we're behind one. We invented one of, a few years back uh, called App URL uh, that we're releasing soon in our developer program. Awesome. But there are also awesome. Facebook, Google, uh, Twitter, um, there's other companies doing the same thing. It's all the same kind of concept behind it, and I think yeah. it's important to look into all of those and what those features mean to you as a app developer. There you go. So deep linking, deep ecosystem connections, and yes. a deep dive here at CES with Quixie. Oscar, thanks for being with Thank us on so the much. App Resource Connect. We're going to keep rolling through the weekend. We're going to circle back around with you, though. Yeah. Find out what these predictions come true. That, Maybe at the end of the year. Good. That's Please a great way that, to do yeah. it. So, all right, we'll be right back oh. with more from CES. Yes. This segment of the webcast is presented by the marketing department, offering a full suite of services for the mobile app lifecycle, delivering outstanding ROI to app marketers and publishers. So we are going to begin our C-Level Spotlight Series here at CES with Mr. Christopher Dean, the CEO of Swerve, who just presented on uh, one of the stages. And uh, Swerve, of course, is one of the premier in-app marketing companies in the, in the entire industry. And uh, he presented this document that I thought was a fascinating place to start. So why don't you tell us a little about your buyer's guide to, to mobile marketing automation. Great. So uh, this is actually a guide that we just published. And uh, the idea behind it is not an overt sales document. It's really uh, laying out a set of questions that an app publisher or an app developer should really be asking about a mobile marketing automation platform. And it runs through a whole range of different questions about g just general questions worth worth asking. There's a lot of point and counterpoint going on in the market where a sure. lot of people are saying they can do lots of things and the reality is they can't. So this goes through a whole set of data and analytics questions, a set of automation questions, and a set of optimization and A-B testing questions that every uh, mobile market and every app publisher really should ask and then answer before they purchase a mobile marketing automation platform. Yeah, and one of the focuses here on the App Resource Connect is thought leadership. All year long throughout our webinars, our newsletter online, we featured stories through Swerve, and you seem to be a company focused on content that matters. Uh, what would you say if you had a developer or a publisher, first time sitting down, what's the most important advice they need to take in a 2015? Yeah, again, I, uh, I think that um, a, a very, very critical thing is you can't 
can't just build your app and then try to acquire users. Uh, you really have to focus on what happens the day after you've acquired that potential ah, yeah. user. How do you activate them? How do you engage them? How do you retain them? And how do you convert them? Because all of these app, all of the app download campaigns, you're spending more and more money to pay for that user to actually download the app. 19% of users use an app exactly once. Sure. And uh, and 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 you know, 70 to 90 percent of those users can churn out over a short period of time. So how much of your budget are you wasting? You've got to focus on activating, engaging, retaining, and converting those users with a mobile marketing automation platform. And I also, during your talk, I heard you mention talking about beacons. Beacons seems to be the hot topic of CES 2015. How is Swerve stepping into that space where it's almost, it's a smart ecosystem? Yep. So uh, beacons are a great use case for lots and lots of different types of apps, and it adds uh, an, basically another event into our system. So we're integrated with a variety of beacons, uh, and uh, when I get close to a beacon, it's basically a proximity-based event. It can trigger an event in our platform, which allows us to either deliver a push notification, an in-app message, or content. So we think it's very important around retail, around travel and hospitality, around auto, around transportation, a bunch of different verticals. I, th I don't think the consumer market fully understands how integrated the mobile world is going to be in 2015, but obviously Swerve does. Yep. So if we're going to look at predictions, this is the fun part of the interview, yep. right? Yep. 2015, the whole year is ahead of us, and broad horizons, a new landscape. What's the what's your top prediction for 2015? Uh, top prediction for 2015 uh, is uh, the requirement for uh, integrated multi-channel or omni-channel communications. So I'm old enough to have lived through the growth of the web, and people. I am too. There used to be. <laughs> <laughs> we both are. There used we to be, survived. We did. There used to be people who had you know internet in their title, right? And then the internet became just the digital marketing channel, right? Mobile. You, you run into all these people who have mobile in their title right now. That's going to be gone in two years and it's there it just is, folks. and it's just going to be a single part it's going to be additional channel within the digital marketing realm it's going to be the most important channel yeah. it's you know we've got this always addressable incredibly personal device uh, in our pocket uh, but it's going to be just one of the channels that people are going to be integrated with it won't be standalone sure yeah and obviously we're looking at the changing landscape of all forms of media it's a changing ecosystem and uh, maybe you can swerve your way through with the help of a company like swerve how about that so hey listen Chris Thank you. Thank you for being part of the App Resource Connect, and we're going to move right on through the CES. More to come. This segment of the webcast is presented by the Marketing Department, offering a full suite of services for the mobile app lifecycle, delivering outstanding ROI to app marketers and publishers. So the crux of the entire two days here at App Nation 5 is really on the cover of the schedule. It's Discover, Acquire, and Monetize. That's the, the slogan of App Nation 6. And I'm um, here back with a return guest to the App Resource Connect, Mr. Mike Hines, the lead tech evangelist for the Amazon App Store. Mike, welcome back. Thank you very much. Heather. And you just did a whale of a presentation. Uh, many people were, were saying it was one of the best presentations of the week. Uh, and that's all over CES. Yes. And uh, something tells me you, you you decided to match the theme of the event to the talk. Is that right? Uh, it, was, it was no accident. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, certainly, the theme of monetize is something that we know a fair bit about as uh, an app store. And we've got a lot of data that can help us give really good guidance to developers. So the talk that we gave today was about in-app purchasing. And we shared how the top 50 apps with in-app purchasing use the different tools in ways that most other developers don't. So hopefully this gives the other developers things to think about and maybe things that they can try so that they can get results more like the top 50. Sure, and, and of course there's a lot of different ways to monetize apps. Um, freemium, in-app purchase, in-app ads, but IAP seems to be the one, especially for the gaming world, that is the best re-engagement. Isn't that the case? In-app purchasing is very hot right now. Yeah. There's, there's no doubt that it's currently the trend for freemium. And as such, we have a whole bunch of different little labs out there. A bunch of different companies have tried different things. Some things have worked really well, some haven't. One of the big takeaways that we got from looking at the data in our app 
store, is that it's not just about the retention data. Uh, In-app purchasing really isn't about just lowering the price to 99 cents and selling a bunch. It's recognizing that your best users are going to be there two weeks and longer, that the user who's been in your game for 30 days is willing to spend 60% more than a user on day one, and that as an app developer, if you're not offering the right in-app purchase catalog to the right user at that time, uh, you're really not doing the user any great service, and then that's going to hurt your revenue. Sure, and you even showed the, the sort of the diametric metrics, uh, the diametrics of, of uh, a lot of offerings versus the price of the offerings. You talked about bulk purchases and discounts on in-app purchases. It's almost like the triumvirate of IAP, LTV, and ROI. Like, your talk really addressed all three of them. And someone actually gave you a, a direct quote that involved millions of dollars. What did they say after your talk? <laughs> this this person said that she wanted to come up and give me a hug because I just saved her company millions of dollars. Ah, how about that? With one talk. <laughs> I imagine love that the kind of power, feedback. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Imagine if you went to a weekend seminar with this this guy. So, um, now let's talk. We talked in our last webinar from NDevCon. We talked about what 2015 looked like. You guys are rolling out some new things to help the developers, and it sounds like you're really making sure the consumer is, is aware of things on that end as well. What is your overall feel for App Nation uh, as far as that connection between dev, uh, marketing, and consumer? Um, App Nation is doing a really good job of trying to focus developers' attention on really working for customers. Um, there, there's no doubt that if, if you're really not taking care of your customer, no amount of special trickery with uh, whiz bang gizmos gadgets there's no uh, method within app purchasing you're going to do that's going to help make you successful if you're not addressing customer needs okay. um, and I think that app nation really is getting down to that level in several different aspects about getting and acquiring users um, such that we're offering the users value that they can actually get from your app about retaining users and keeping surfacing the value of your app to those users and if you do a good job of demonstrating value you and showing them that you're useful, people will reward you by buying in-app purchase items because you're helping them get what they want. And when all of those three things work together, you're going to be really successful with your app and monetization. Sure, and it helps with the fatigue, right? You know, when they're, when they're engaged and they want to be involved, the fatigue is a lot less lower well, coming. Well, certainly one of the things that we talked about in uh, the presentation this afternoon was always adding new content so that the users had new and fresh experiences. Um, you're not going to get more money from from a customer simply because you lower the price. You've got to offer value first. Sure. And the value is going to come in refreshed content, new experiences, new ways that they can engage with things. Yeah. And then they'll be encouraged to go ahead and spend more in-app currency on those valuable experiences that you offer. And if you want them to um, take advantage of all of those valuable offerings, you can lower the price on in-app purchases, uh, putting them on sale, so they can build up their inventory of soft currency items, sure. for example. Sure, yeah. and people love to have those digital things. Things, those little coins, yeah, and other things as well. Uh, but you you pointed out something I just want to address real quick about the social component of a well-designed <laughs> app. And you talked a specific uh, an example that really hits home: geography and uh, your son. Right? You had a little tête-à-tête -tête with your son on a geography app. Um, and this this really shows how something that's really simple and easy to implement, like uh, leaderboards and achievements, that's um, it, yeah. can make such a big difference in a user's experience with the app. Leaderboards and Achievements is just a very uh, very easy, low-effort way to integrate a social aspect into the game. In the case of this geography app, really, e any one of you could have made this over a weekend. I'm not kidding. It was that simple. <laughs> but they had Leaderboards and Achievements. <laughs> so um, I played the game. My son played the game. I beat him. Everything is as it should be. I'm done. Until father's I, in charge until yeah, yeah, until I get a notification that my son beat my high score. Yes. I go back into the game, the harsh reality. play it, until I beat his high score. Okay, now everything's done. Well, wouldn't you know what happens a few hours later? I get another message. So Kids on top of it. I went and I went back into that silly little geography app yeah. at least 24 more times yeah. before I finally set a high score that he couldn't beat. Now, again, this is a 
stupid little 48-hour geography <laughs> app, guys. Any of you could have done this. But he got 24 more ad impressions from me ah, uh, because of leaderboards yes. and achievements. He got 24 more opportunities to sell me IAP items. He got 24 more instances of, of, of being in front of my eyeballs wow. because of something as simple as leaderboards and achievements. How about that? And uh, this intergenerational competition was being viewed <laughs> from the inside and the outside. From the inside, Dad had to win. But from the outside, you were watching all the monetization points, all the touch points inside the life of the app, and you probably had to tip your hat, yeah? Absolutely. He made a lot more money in ad revenue from me because of, of something that? that simple. See, folks, it pays it, it pays dividends to pay attention to not only how people can love to compete, but all the different ways that you can subtly monetize and the people are willing to pay for it if it's done well. Because you know what the value that app offered value, to me? Value. Yeah. Value. There the you go. The value was I got value out of being better at geography than my son. That's the <laughs> value that I wanted. And maybe moments of <laughs> embarrassment too, huh? Yeah. yeah. But <laughs> or I mean, admiration. Your son the, really the showed up, right? The leaderboards and achievements gave me that mechanism that I needed in the game yeah. so that my son and I could have this really great competition. Now, what is the end result of all of this? He and I are both a whole lot better at geography How than we used that? to be. We're a lot closer about talking about geography nice. than we used to be. And some developer who spent 48 hours building a geography app is a fair amount richer. <laughs> See that, folks? Edutainment, mobile app engagement, and, and family uh, get-together, family cohesion. It's all working here with Mike Hines App Store, Amazon App Store lead tech evangelist. Thanks again. And uh, some of our predictions for 2015. Anything you want to let the folks know about a prediction? Not at this time, but stay tuned. Stay tuned for more. From the App Resource Connect here from CES. And um, we did talk about one last thing. The Bucks or the Ducks? Oh, it's got to be the Ducks. Got to be the Bucks. Go Buckeyes. Oh, now you're wrong. You. Now you're wrong. O-H-I-O. <laughs> Let it go. This segment of the webcast is presented by the Marketing Department, offering a full suite of services for the mobile app lifecycle, delivering outstanding ROI to app marketers and publishers. All right, so it's part two of today's webinar from CES App Nation 6 right here in Las Vegas. E. Emmett Brady, publisher of the App Resource Connect, and with all the ideas flying around, there's a lot of energy. It's kind of like a big stream of consciousness in the mobile app space. And my next guest on the webinar is a, an expert in the stream of media. This is Elliot Poppel. He is the CEO of App.io, a company dedicated to the next wave of mobile streaming. So welcome to the App Resource Connect. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being on, Elliot. So tell us a little bit about App.io's look into 2015. What you got coming down the pipe? Sure. So what App.io does is we stream mobile applications the same way that maybe Netflix streams movies or Spotify streams music. And what I mean by that is that rather than having to download an app before you can interact with it, we allow you to let end users or let internal developers really touch and feel and completely interact with the app with zero friction beforehand. Wow. It's, sort of, it's like the, the embodiment of the next wave of the cloud, I guess. Huh? Yeah. That's, that's what we think. Yeah. yeah. Now, um, how many different um, applications do you manage right now as a company? Is it just a proprietary app, or is there a whole suite of apps? Oh, we're, we're managing apps for multiple different companies um, all over the globe. Probably at this point, close to 20,000 different apps are on the wow. platform streaming. I think it's close to 1.5 million minutes of streamed content 1. per 5, month. 1.5, folks. Now, man, most people don't even understand streaming media, period. Streaming media on the web is, is old school. This is mobile streaming, and that's a real big innovation. What is the sweet spot for what you do? What is the biggest challenge in the app lifecycle that you solve? So for us, it's really not so much about app lifecycle. There's a lot of different use cases. So whether that's when a company is getting ready to launch and being able to show or, and let a, an end user potentially play with the app before they get there. Maybe it's ah, even before launch where nice. when companies are getting ready to, to update their app and launch a new one or they're, they're testing internally before they're prepared to launch, they don't want to push this to the app store. And things like Test Flight and Hockey App tend to be pretty clunky and require provisioning and, and versioning and UDIDs, things like that. Sure. With us, everything can be shared safe, secure, all in the private cloud um, without any any really technical understanding uh, for the end user wow. or for the user uploading it. 
the lightest and fastest way to explore an app. That'd be a nice way to put it. Absolutely. Yeah. I, and I think speed is really what we do best. That's that's what really differentiates us. When you're streaming a movie or a song, latency is built in, and latency is okay because that's a one-way stream. If if we're streaming. I don't know, the, the Monday night football game and there's a 10 second delay the only issue is if the neighbor's watching on cable and I hear them <laughs> you cheer. hear the results ahead of time but For when sure. you're streaming an app it's, we're talking it's not the Monday night football game it's streaming something like the, the Madden app on my phone yeah. And I don't want to swipe to have the quarterback throw and then wait 10 seconds before sure. I see that happen. Sure. Um, the same goes for enterprise apps as well. You want that real-time interaction. And we're able to stream so fast that to the end user, it appears as if it's a native app running on your phone. But there was none of that headache of getting that app on the phone beforehand. So where you fit in Lifecycle, of course, between the, the publisher and, and the user is that that sweet spot is, is pretty much what uh, some of the biggest companies in the world are filling right now. You know, Salesforce fills that role with the marketing and sales and now here you are filling that role with the streaming. So if you're sitting down with a new publisher or a new dev, what bit of advice would you give them uh, starting right from scratch? You know, I think it's really just getting your app in the customer's hands as early as possible. Um, And that's something that that we've seen more and more users... um, as testing has grown as a use case for us, our customers have come to us and said, hey, how do we share this in a way where we can give this to a customer but be able to control what they can see, and then when we decide we want to change something, update it or, or pull it back so that they can no longer play with it. Um, and, and that's really where, where we're able to help and just being able to get customers insight early sure. without having it be a, a hectic or a an annoying process yeah. is, is something that more, uh, we're finding sailing, more and more yeah. using. Exactly. Instead of pushing things up a hill, it's just sort of like, you know, pulling it along nicely. It's just simple. It's just, for the end user, it's just going to a website. Simple as that. Now, you told me that you joined CE, uh, as a CEO this year for App.io. Give me some predictions for 2015. This is it right here at CES, folks. The first <laughs> predictions, what do you see in mobile for 2015? I think you're going to see, uh, in general, I think beacons are going to be huge and payments are going to be huge. I think you're going to hear that from probably everyone you talk That's to. That's great, though. You're the first one, uh, the beacon. I'm going to follow this up. So maybe what we should do, Elliot, is have another interview with you some point, Q2, Q3, and see uh, how this is all panning out. What do you think? That sounds great to me. All right. So Elliot Popple, CEO of App.io. Thanks for being on the App Resource Thanks Connect. Thanks for having me. We're going to keep rolling through the CES. Back for more. This segment of the webcast is presented by the marketing department, offering a full suite of services for the mobile app lifecycle, delivering outstanding ROI to app marketers and publishers. Okay, everybody, welcome back to the App Resource Connect here at CES Las Vegas 2015. I'm E. Emmett Brady, the publisher of App Resource Connect, and as you know, we're always keeping an eye out for the innovators. Some people are at the leading edge, some people at the bleeding edge, and then some people are a tectonic plate all their own. Like my, ne- my next guest here, this is Matt Hager, and Matt is uh, the founder of a tech incubator called E-Man, London office, San Francisco Bay right. office. Hey, want to welcome you to the App Resource Thank Connect. You. Good to me. Now, Good there's so me. much we could talk about, but over our shoulder right there is literally the bleeding edge of technology. Uh, tell us a little bit about this hackathon that's happening over our shoulder. So, Eman have been hired uh, by Freebie to uh, put a hackathon on. And what's very special about this hackathon is it's a very uh, innovative and emerging new ecosystem for 3D app and game development. 3D, yo. Yeah, like stereoscopic 3D. So, this is a brand new, like, emerging ecosystem. It's never been done before. We have uh, Freevee who are the manufacturers and distributors of the hardware and what they don't have right now is great distribution. They don't have the developer ecosystem. They don't have, um, you know, the, the community and that's what we're trying to build today. Here you're at, like, here, you're here, like building here your own at, ecosystem. Uh, yeah, right. It's from, from, being from grown the, right here. From the ground up. Amazing. Yeah. It's going to be called Freevee Nation. Freevee um, Nation. Now they just uh, showed, me a vi- they showed me a video of a surfer and I got to tell yeah. you guys it, it was a mind blower to see see a video that was so yeah. stereoscopic. Now, before we talk about E-Man, tell me yeah. a little bit more about this hackathon, because what we're going to do is we're going to cover right. this like a sporting event. Oh, we're going to interview right, the right, people right. and, you know, yeah. maybe like a reality show, we'll get them in the middle of him fight yeah. or something like that. But tell me how this hackathon is going to unfold over the next few days. Well, so uh, at GDC um, in, La- in, in, in LA uh, in uh, November, we uh, actually launch 
pushed our World Developer Challenge. So we're trying to find a thousand uh, 3D, well, Unity gaming experts or Android OpenGL gaming experts who had a passion for stereoscopic 3D production. Wow. Um, now that's not a big community. How many no, people are we no. talking about here? It's a, a it's, couple thousand maybe but, around the world? But the response that we had was extraordinary. Oh, we had nice, so nice. many people, like our stand was packed for the entire two days. We um, had like three, four hundred submissions. We narrowed it down to like 50 submissions. And now we have like 50 developers like bringing their, their products to life through our ecosystem. So what you see over there is a hackathon, which is a little side project to what we're doing with the World Developer Challenge, where we thought while we're at CES, we'll just like make, have a presence here at AppMation and just Let it rip. bring some people in who have passion for doing what we want to be doing, which is building the next wave of 3D games and apps, and literally give them 24 hours to come up with something uh, special that they can submit, and the winner gets $500, and everybody that su submits a successful product, they get a free tablet to a take home. A free tablet. I think, yeah. I think the $500 is okay, but I think the exposure yeah. that they're going to get through working with someone like you is pretty incredible, yeah. because Matt has extensive research, background, experience in launching, incubating technology companies both here and on the other side of the world, That's right. and in part two of this interview, we're going to take a look at this hackathon a little bit deeper, we're going to come back and talk some more about yeah. E-Man here, so Wonderful. App Resource Correct, Connect, we'll be right back. This segment of the webcast is presented by the Marketing Department, offering a full suite of services for the mobile app lifecycle, delivering outstanding ROI to app marketers and publishers. All right, we are rolling through day two here at the CES in Las Vegas. This is E. Emmett Brady. I'm the uh, CMO and publisher for the App Resource Connect. And uh, we are on the main stage, sort of the center of it all here at App Nation 6. If you're going to talk about mobile apps, folks, everybody knows you're going to talk about gamers. The gamer nation is one of the driving forces behind the, behind the mobile industry. And I am here with Kate Edwards. She is the executive director of the International Game Developers Association. Welcome to the App Resource Connect. Thank you. You. And you just did a fantastic panel. Now, uh, there's a lot to cover here, mm -hmm. but since our audience is all about the innovations happening at CES, mm -hmm. give us a bullet for 2015. What's the big mission for uh, the Developers Association? Well, the IHDA, we are we are the global professional association for all game developers, regardless of the platform that they're working on, um, regardless of the types of games they're working on. And so obviously, since games are a technology-driven industry, um, things like CES are incredibly important to the industry to get a sense of what kinds of innovations are coming down, um, what kinds of challenges developers are going to have, um, what kind of you know new um, opportunities they're going to have in terms of creating games on new platforms or using new interfaces like Oculus and a lot of the. Oh yeah, that's a big that's a big one, folks. The Oculus Rift, the new 3D technology, uh, still got some work to do, but definitely yes. definitely leading the leading edge of the interactive game experience. Absolutely, yeah. and so I think for 2015 that's one of the key areas we're going to see more growth. I think it's going to become much more mainstream as things, you know, these new interfaces like the Oculus Rift, um, like the Sony uh, Morpheus that they're working on. The, so basically immersive 3D virtual reality technology, um, which has its all of a host of different development issues that, sure. that developers have to think about, not the least of which is latency, which is causes most motion sickness in a lot of players. And... Um, so things like that are coming down. Um, we're also seeing, obviously, with the new technological innovations, things like the the phone tablets, the phablets, um, you know, <laughs> tablets. The phablets. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> and right next door, there's a phablet hackathon hacking absolutely. right there. You know, you talked to Matt Hager. We just did the play-by-play uh, -play for the 3D uh, mm -hmm. development hackathon going on there. Now, as an executive, though, mm -hmm. you are not just looking at the technology. You're looking at the marketing, the PR, the, right. uh, the, uh, the industry success. As whole, mm -hmm. how it's monetized, how the business is success. Mm -hmm. What is your definition of success for a business in this industry? Well, I mean, you obviously have one level of success is the financial success, of course. I mean, because we are 
an industry which means we are comprised of businesses and businesses exist to generate revenue. So that's important. I mean, you create a game, you want it to be popular and you want it to generate revenue. Um, that's on the business side, obviously, but a large part of what I think sometimes people forget, the game industry is a creative art form. Sure. It's a creative industry. just like, Among the most creative. Well, I mean, it attracts the best of the best. Absolutely. Yeah. And so I think there's a lot of terms of, uh, that you can define success. And I think for a lot of individual developers, I know many who are extremely happy with what they accomplished, even if their game didn't maybe reach the financial success sure. that they were hoping for. But creatively, they achieved new, you know, new ground. They have new highs for themselves or for the industry. And now typically those go hand in hand. You create a new gaming experience that is phenomenal and something new. People are going to buy it and they're going to enjoy it, and so you will you will see the financial benefit. But sure. that doesn't always happen, and just because that doesn't happen doesn't mean the game's not a success. Yeah, well, and of course, this industry is a working laboratory. Uh, so many of the talks here at that Nation have said the same phrase of like, "Well, we're still figuring this out, and where are things going?" Right. As the executive director mm -hmm. of of the uh, of your group, how do you direct the industry? How do you how do you advise the industry? Well, one of the things that we do is that we basically speak from the perspective of the individual developer. Yeah. So you've got like the Entertainment Software Association, which is a trade association in the United States representing the companies that comprise the industry. We represent individual developers, the, the people who are doing the work every day. Yeah. Um, so we're taking that kind of focus on what are the issues affecting individual developers? What kind of you know things are concerning them? I mean, a lot of it is focused around like their working conditions focused around their need for professional development to make sure that they continue to better their craft and better their skills. A lot goes into this industry, huh? Absolutely. Yeah. All, all, all the steps. Remember, the App Resource Connect has our app lifecycle uh, infographic, and it's there's mm -hmm. a lot of details. That a lot of the technical people, even the creative people, never necessarily develop, and that's kind of where your, your organization steps in. Exactly. Yeah. So we, we want to see game developers succeed on an individual level, which, of course, is in turn will help their business succeed and help the industry succeed. Now, if I could just for a moment shift the conversation from the, the commercial apps mm -hmm. to what I call edutainment apps, mm -hmm. the ones that are really not designed to drive the millions in profits, right. more designed for engagement, deep knowledge, training, you know, industry skill sets. Mm -hmm. what, what do you think are some of the, the bold edutainment apps out there in the market? Um, that's a great question. I mean, off the top of my head, it's hard to to name even just one that it really stands out as being like a a model for that, but I mean, in a general sense, the edutainment apps, I think we're going to see so many more of those um, because, I mean, there's been many, many studies that have confirmed that passive learning is one of the best ways that you can, sure. you know, sure. uh, educate people. I know even within the public edu education systems, um, they're starting to be a little bit of... Um, I would say acceptance, if yeah. not outright implementation, but at least acceptance of the fact that games can play a very key role. Yeah, in they're, they're not invasive into the classroom. No. They are a new tool in the classroom. Exactly. And, and of course, the paradigm of the teacher in front of the classroom lecturing mm -hmm. is a little bit out of date for this new generation of kids who want, you know, it is. results, videos, you know, and, and, they're, and they, they know how to work the media. And that's probably the biggest gap, I would think, in the education world is that the, the traditional established education system does not mm -hmm. necessarily embrace technology at the pace of the students, you know, and that's where mobile right. apps is really, really at the forefront, yeah. Absolutely, I totally agree. And, and, and another thing that I think is key for the edutainment type apps is that as we see more of those come up, um, we're going to see, I think, fewer people in general society at large look at games as nothing more than an entertainment distraction with yeah. kind of a negative negative bent to sure, it. Sure. So I think they're going to see that, you know, it's games, it's it's a methodology, it's it's a technology, it's a, you know, it's a way that you can, you know, basically engage the human senses in a way that just past the, the normal techniques. Transcendent really, stuff, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And I think we'll see more of that acceptance, which I think in, will in turn, of course, help the broader game industry. Awesome. Okay, now before we talk about what's coming up in San Francisco, because mm -hmm. I look forward to seeing you the Game Developer Conference, yes. right, in Santa Clara. I think it's in March, yeah, early March. Yep. Um, let's talk about prediction. Have some fun with this one. What do you see in 2015? Um, I think in 2015, a couple of key things. I mean, on, obviously on the technology side, um, we're going to be seeing 
you know, more exploration into the, the alternative interfaces like Oculus and all that. Um, there is something of a learning curve for that for developers sure. in, in trying, in not to mention costs in terms of getting the development kit and all that. Um, but I think we're going to see a lot more interest in that and, and exploring, okay, we've got consoles, we've got tablets, we've got all of these platforms, but what can we really do with them? You know, and how can we make this experience even more engaging for the player? And, you know, it's not too different from what we're seeing in the movie industry right now where they are... I wouldn't say it's analogous in terms of the life cycle because the movies have been around for a hundred years, but you know they're trying to explore things like using high frame rate and you know IMAX. Yeah, the Hobbit. That was a big innovation with the whole Hobbit movies, and it was exactly. it was strangely received at first, and now people are just considering it part of the landscape. Exactly. They, smog would not have pulled off oh, without no. that frame rate, Jess. Man. Boy, not. did they nail the smog <laughs> for sure. You know. Absolutely. Well, listen, Kate Edwards. Thanks for being on the App Resource Connect. Thank you. The IGDC. Uh, IGDA. IGDA. I'm sorry. Uh, check it out on. Online and it's mm -hmm. .org, right? Yes. It's a .org online. And then um, maybe we can circle back around in March and see how some of these predictions are, are starting to pan out at, at the Game Developer Conference. Absolutely. Okay. Awesome. Absolutely. All right. It doesn't get any better than this, folks. The leading edge with the leading experts right here at CES App Nation in Las Vegas. We'll be back for more. This segment of the webcast is presented by the Marketing Department, offering a full suite of services for the mobile app lifecycle, delivering outstanding ROI to app marketers and publishers. So it's the afternoon edition of today's App Resource Connect from App Nation 6 at CES in Las Vegas. And uh, as you know, our platforms through the App Resource Connect are all about connecting developers, publishers, marketers, and the resources that can make their business soar. It's a pretty wild west out there, you know. A lot of things are changing, and some companies are focused on providing solutions to the inefficiencies in the marketplace. And my next guest is the CEO and founder of Kite, and in fact, that is the mission of Kite. I'd like to welcome Mark Silver to the App Resource Connect, Mark. Nice welcome. to meet you, yeah. And uh, it's a pretty broad, broad mission statement that you have. Uh, tell me a little bit more about how you, uh, you execute that, uh, solving the, the problems in the marketplace. So the specific problems that we're actually trying to solve is a problem we saw five, six years ago as big brands were trying to act, have an, an incredible pressure and an immense amount of uh, desire to put money into the app ecosystem to uh, for their own apps, for their own brand marketing. Uh, we saw a lot of uh, conversations, but not so many deals happen, not so many sure. transactions, uh, largely due to the inefficiency. So if you think about a show like App Nation or the CES even, people are spending tens of thousands of dollars to come here and walk the halls to meet their next partners, to find companies that they might actually partner or invest their media dollars in or partner with in some way. Sure. It's an incredibly inefficient hand -to -hand <laughs> It's a little bit Web 2.0, don't you so think? So software yeah. needs to eat this problem. That's our that's our basic uh, uh, approach. And we started uh, we started mobile first. So so we also uh, have a huge amount of uh, heart for the challenges that your your app developers have as well. Yeah, and, and so if you were to sit down with with a business person now, app developers sometimes think about the technology, but we're talking about the business of apps as well. If you were to sit down with a business person, what's the first steps you guide them to as a company? Um, so, the, the uh, conversation going on on stage at App Nation is very much centered around, do you buy or build your own technology? Should you partner with someone else who's already got incredible traction with the consumers uh, or customers, uh, or should you build it yourself? And, and I don't think anybody's come up with a definitive answer to, to that. The, ju I think the jury is still out on that one. There's, sure, a, yeah. there's a lot of companies who feel that kind of expertise doesn't sit resonant in their halls. That great innovation doesn't sit in the four walls of enterprise. And so uh, there's a recognition that in order to get that disruptive growth, they're going to need to partner with companies. And so we're actually helping facilitate a lot of that through our software. That's interesting. You're addressing inefficiencies in the marketplace by causing disruptive growth, you know. And this is this is very much inside the industry terminology, but I looked at your info graphic online and you have a lot of big clients already. We do. Eight hundred billion dollars I think was in the in the infographic yeah, in, market cap. In you know? Market capitalization of companies like Diageo and General Electric and and uh, uh, they're they're all looking at um, the uh, startup ecosystem as a potential place to create growth in 
any part of their business, whether it's actual growth in customers, growth in engagement, growth in uh, their own core product uh, sales and, and, and marketing. Um, so there's the potential for explosive growth in that to get a competitive advantage over a marketplace that literally is growing at single digits rather than double digits sure. these years. If you look at anything interesting in the startup marketplace, and in fact, most startups, you'd argue, uh, aren't hitting their breakaway moment so they're doing 10% month over month growth, right? Circle it, folks. 10% month over month. That's a good metric venture to shoot guys, for. That you when you, and when you have that 10% month, month over month, you'll have no problem with venture funding. You'll have no problem with you know, sustaining Got growth. It. That's great. Uh, That's the first time someone has, has put that number on the table. And I think it's, it's, a, it's an attainable metric, but it's also going to take a lot of work and that, a good strategy. That, that number is out there in a lot of places. You can find it in first round capital or with homebrew capitals uh, 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 websites. Uh, they talk a lot about these kind of growth hacking moments in moments when you actually know that you've got something that's starting to exceed your amount of investment and starting to outstrip um, the value that you're uh, that you could create simply by a uh, organic growth. Got it. Now we're looking forward to your talk, but before you go, this is the fun part of the interview. Yeah. Predictions. You know, it's the new year. You get to throw the dart out in the distance. Yeah. What do you see coming down the pipe for 2015? Well, I think uh, for 2015. On the enterprise side, I'm going to make a couple of big, broad um, areas. First of all, everything that we were doing in 2014 is going to be as important in 2015. So a lot of things you're going to see around video, around mobile, um, uh, native app, uh, native advertising. Those are all things that are going to be super important to them. Um, you're hearing a lot of buzz right now about deep linking um, as an advancement uh, that people are really looking forward to. Um, and then I would, I would argue that... Uh, uh, the, like the mind-blowing stuff that's going to be 18 months out are the things that you know we, you're seeing here at at, at, at CES. Uh, some of the augmented reality, some of the um, sure. Internet of Things, uh, the connected devices. Um, all of those activities uh, are still very nascent, and they're not going to be mass in my opinion, in 2015. Uh, but the stuff that's closer in is uh, a lot of stuff around mobile video. Huge appetite for that. We just saw Brightroll exit at the end of last year. Um, you're going to see a lot more of that activity over there. And, and um, I know it sounds kind of boring from a, from a hey, where's the money in the, on the app side. Um, the other uh, area that you're hearing a lot here and at CES, driven largely by the Sony hack, is security. So that's you know, again, it's, a big it's super boring. Not talked enough super, about, though, Super course, boring, yeah. but a lot of money there yeah, uh, yeah. in terms of places to hunt. Yeah, there's a couple companies here that are really interested in the hacking space and the security. We won't mention any names, but yeah. they rhyme with pony, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe we'll edit that part out of the interview. So, Well, listen, thank you for your time. Mark Silver, you CEO of Kite. And remember, folks, if you need the resources, they're all online. We've got uh, getkite.co, and any startup can claim their Kite profile for free, and we start connecting with Enterprise. There you go. A place to connect on the web. Thank you for your time, and we're going to keep rolling through CES. We'll be back for more. This segment of the webcast is presented by the Marketing Department, offering a full suite of services for the mobile app lifecycle, delivering outstanding ROI to app marketers and publishers. So when you show up at the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas, you are looking for one thing more than anything else, and that is innovation. And of course, here at the App Resource Connect, we are always looking for the innovators in the mobile app space. And I came upon this booth. This is Tradeify, and they are leading the charge in personality API. So I am here with Josh Spears. Josh, welcome to the App Resource Connect. Happy yeah. to be here. And uh, he has a special role at Tradeify. It sounds like he's the, the lead tech evangelist and the CFO. So he's thinking with both halves of his brain. Tell us a little bit about this fantastic new new app. Sure. So um, Tradeify is the world's first personality API, um, and we make assessments available in a very unique way. So we tackle it all visually, um, kind of the Tinderization of things, if you can think of it. So we show a user an image, and they have a choice between saying me or not me based upon their reaction to that image. 
We then collect personality data behind the scenes based upon their interactions. We make this available via an API to developers to embed in their applications so wow. they can start to collect that data about their users and use it for rich personalization. There we go. And it's really leading edge, like we're psychology, market research blends with personalized mobile experience. And I'm going to do something with you, Josh, that I've never done before. I'm going to go behind the camera during this interview so you can show with this app. Hang on, folks. We'll be right back. Here we go. Live in effect. All right, Josh. Show us this fantastic app. So this is an example of how a user might interact with our product. So we show an image, beautiful big image, and they have a choice of saying either me or not me. As you can see, it's very quick, very easy to use. Our assessments typically range between 20 and 50 images and take between a minute and a minute and a half to complete. Um, so it's a very easy way to onboard a user during a registration process and collect some really interesting rich data without having them go through tedious form fields. Wow. So it seems to me that Tradeify is at this leading edge of personalizing the app experience. And where exactly does this information go? How does this information impact the developer, the sure. publisher, person, the people who are making the app and the people who are trying to monetize? How does it impact Sure. That? So what we want to do is we want to enable those developers to really understand who they have in their user base. We want uh, to give them the power to engage, to interact with, and to market to those users to create value. Awesome. Um, we understand that you know users are people, and we want to get to the core of what makes them oh, well, well, Hold on. Hold on. Repeat that for the audience. Audience. Users are people. Users are people too. Yes, That's something yes. that doesn't get said Not just enough. a number, not just Not just consumers, exactly. not just, you know, uh, the, the user is a person with a personality. Exactly. And really, this is the leading edge of mobile. So, since we're looking into the future, let's talk about some predictions for 2015. Sure. What do you see coming down the pipe as a CFO for Tradeify? Sure. So, with us, I really see personality becoming something that's more of a buzzword, more understood. Um, a lot of what we've done in the last year, in 2014, is educate people people about what, what is personality, why is it powerful, and now that it's able to be utilized through our API, how can it really help developers create a rich, powerful experience for those users? So wow. I think now that we've done a lot of education, we've been known in the community, we're going to see a lot of applications use our API and develop some great things. Well, that's great. So we're talking about the full life cycle of an app. What steps along that full life cycle do you, does Tradeify address? So we, we really address not only the onboarding and gathering that data about the user upon registration, but then trying to take that user and monetize and actually figure out how to create value for your company through that user. And it's not just making money off the user, it's creating an experience for the user that's valuable so that they want to sure. interact with your app, that they want to come back to your app and spend money yeah. because you're giving them something that's increasingly valuable that they can't get anywhere yeah. else. Yeah, it's taking the app from a from a tool to a, I'm sorry, from a transaction to a tool. Exactly. Does that make sense? Okay. Yep. Yep. Now, um, with that in mind, if, if I were a new developer, and I uh, was sitting down and talking to Tradeify. What would you tell me as far as the early stage of a, of a life cycle, how to incorporate your product? Sure. I mean, so it really comes down to ROI for, for app developers. Using this, you drastically increase your chances of a conversion. So if you're giving a user personalized content, personalized, for instance, let's use a daily deal, for example. Daily deal sites send out emails every morning, hoping that you'll click on it. They just blast it out, shotgun yeah. blast. Yeah. We want to be that, yeah. that person precision, think of it as a sniper rifle, to go along with a shotgun blast analogy. That's, We're going to target that user, give them exactly what great, they want. It's a great analogy. It's yeah. a great metaphor yeah, for our exactly. webinar, right? And we want to we want to just get right in there, give them what they want, and have them actually want to click buy. And want to click buy again and again because you're constantly delivering them great content and increase that conversion. And even if we can increase your conversion by half a percentage, that's real money for you. That's real, sure. that's real value for your business. Absolutely. And the, long, the lifetime value is enhanced when they're more engaged. Exactly. It's really the leading edge of innovation. The leading edge of innovation. So let me ask you a question. Most of our audience it's are technical people, but some that idea of onboarding is really a tricky concept for some to get. In your words, how would you explain that? So onboarding really the, the user registration process. How you take someone who's discovered your application and create a user. Um, so this is something I see as one of the hardest parts in an application. Hey folks, we're doing an interview just to let you know there's a camera behind you there. Thank you. No, it's okay. Don't apologize. It's one of the hardest parts in an application's life cycle. Getting that user to, to take the step to actually sure. register and become a, a, a user who's coming back again and again and again. Through Tradeify, through our API, we think we can gather that data that will enable you to not only create a user and garner valuable data, data but increase 
your relationship with that user through there you go. understanding the who they are. There's the word. It goes from consumer to a person, and it goes from a transaction to a relationship. Exactly. It's a yes or no, and I got to say yes to Tradeify. So, Josh, thanks for being Thank on you. the App Resource Appreciate Connect. It. We're, we're going to circle back with you later on in the year, maybe see how things, maybe how this prediction's uh, Please is do. playing out. Yeah. So that sounds great. All right, we're going to roll to the next interview here on the App Resource Connect live from CES Las Vegas 2015. This segment of the webcast is presented by the marketing department, offering a full suite of services for the mobile app lifecycle, delivering outstanding ROI to app marketers and publishers. So one of the important things that we do at every event that we attend as App Resource Connect is we want to know what's going on behind the scenes. There's thought leaders in the industry, and then there's thought leaders in the event production. Of course, this is Las Vegas. It's one of the hubs of the world, the great convention center of the entire planet. So the people who work here obviously have a lot of ideas that they have to manage and execute in a very short period of time. App Nation 6 nailed it on the head. And I'm sitting here with Thank you for uh, that. Tracy. Ta well, I did. We just talked about the strategy. and now you You'll get to hear some of the strategy too. And I'm sitting here with uh, Tracy Thompson Hart. Very Welcome nice to the you. App Re Resource Connect, Tracy. She is head of strategic business partnerships for M2 Events, okay. which is the backbone and the thought leaders behind App Nation. Uh, now we talked a little bit about the founder of App Nation, Drew Ayani, and his extensive connections in, across the industry of tech. Yes. Yeah. And we also talked about your background. You've uh, had a background in event production and mobile and everything, and it all synthesized here with serving the needs of the community. You know, why don't you tell us how that came to be? Well, really, this is a new partnership with CES, and it came about because of the, the developers who attend CES really never had a forum to meet and have their own connections. So um, when it was decided that we would come to CES, what the feedback that we're hearing is that they were very happy to have that place for just for the mobile community to meet. Mm -hmm. Actually, this VIP um, area was a great place for them to hold meetings sure. and, and meet people and then go on to CES. So it really filled that void for them. Yeah, it's almost like a buffer zone because, you know, this is this is such an emerging industry. The people who've been doing it the best, you know, uh, it's a lot of people know each other, but there's also so many new elements into the mobile app space, so many moving parts that a VIP, a v, VIP lounge like what Quixie put together here allows people in a relaxed environment to talk tech, to talk, you know, strategy and actually to do business. I mean, that's I've watched it happen back here. But now as an event planner, executing things in Vegas is is it's as high level as it gets. So let's talk about a little bit about how you integrate with the bigger conference. You you played a card here this week by starting the App Nation conference actually before the main CES, which is which is a pretty provocative move in a lot of ways. What was the uh, the impetus for making that choice? Well, we wanted it to be our own conference. So even though we're a partner event of CES, we didn't want to compete with CES. Yeah. So people might be coming in a little early, come to App Nation, and then have an opportunity then to continue on with That's CES. That's what we did. That's exactly what we did. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. And so uh, looking into 2015, obviously M2 events, there's a lot of different types of events as well. That's correct. What's on the what's on the schedule for first, let's talk about mobile. Okay. So this is where we have now one App Nation conference where we had two before a year. We've decided that we're going to have one conference and we're going to be back at CES next year. For okay, so, so it's an annual conference. This is, this is, is where you want to be. So everybody right. circle your calendar. That's right. We same dates here next year. Next year. <laughs> Matter of fact, maybe in this very same couch, you know, we'll find That'd out. <laughs> same plant, same couch, you know, VIP lounge, the you know. done. <laughs> Except next year, maybe it'll be an App Resource Connect lounge, you know, so Ooh. Um, that'd be nice. I'll, I'll be talking to you okay, about that. Okay, cool. Uh, and then what about other events that people can find the M2 team at? Well, M2 um, events has the Chief Digital Officer Global Forum, Global Summit, wow. which is CDX, which they just um, held at Half Moon Bay in San Francisco, and then the next show in May is in Berlin, and they go on to Singapore and Chicago. So it's a busy schedule. It's a global opportunity, and uh, I was I feel great being here at App Nation Six. Let's start looking forward to App Nation right. Seven. Tracy, thanks for being on the App Resource Connect. Lots more to talk about, and everybody out there, we're going to go to the main show now. So this was the last interview here at App Nation. Just remember, it's about discover, acquire, monetize. Mm -hmm. That's it. Got it. Right here at App Nation. More to come.